To begin looking at advanced sketching, we're going to start with our 3D sketching tools and that environment in general, as well as a few settings around 3D sketching. So to begin with, I'm just going to start a new part file. So if I go up to my new command, I'll start a new metric template. Once our new part file has begun, generally what we've done in normal part modeling is we would start a new 2D sketch. We would start creating extrusions, revolves, things of that nature. But we're going to take a second look here at our first steps. So instead of creating a new 2D sketch, we could create a new 3D sketch. Now that's accomplished by simply going to the pull down under the start 2D sketch command and choosing a start 3D sketch. Once you're launched into this environment, you have a new 3D sketch tab at the top of the screen, as well as some familiar commands and some commands you've never seen before inside of this new contextual tab. So let's begin by breaking down what we see up here. On the draw panel, we have a line command, helical curve, an arc tool, spline, equation curve, a point command, and a bend command. And we don't see other commands like rectangle or things like that. So it's very much stripped down, as well as a few new commands being added into this draw panel. We also see projection type tools, such as include geometry, which is very similar to the project geometry command we would find in a 2D sketch. But here in the 3D world, we're simply allowing us to use it, so we include it. We also have other tools, such as intersection curve, silhouette curve, and project curve to surface. On the constraint panel, we have dimensional constraints as well as a select few geometric constraints. So we don't have everything there we're accustomed to. Here we just have coincident, collinear, we have our parallel and perpendicular, our tangent, our smooth, and our fixed constraint. We have a pattern command, which is just the mirror command. And on the modify, we have trim, extend, and split. Over on insert, we have an insert point and insert AutoCAD file. Those are commands we've seen before, but they are also here. And lastly, on the format panel, we have a construction, driven dimension, and a point toggle. And of course, we can finish our sketch there at the end, as we can with any 2D sketch as well. Now, in this advanced part modeling course, we're going to see these commands used quite a bit here and there, kind of all over the place. So we want to take a little bit of time and talk about these different types of commands, where you can see them utilized, and a few simple examples of how to work through some of the commands so you're better prepared for other parts of this video series. And definitely one thing I want to point out is when you're drawing things with the line command, there's a command option that's an auto bend function. And I want to show you where you can adjust those settings as well as what the auto bend radius is. If I go to my tools tab, and I choose Document Settings. On our Sketch tab, we can see a 3D Sketch Auto Bend Radius. So with this turned on, if the Auto Bend functionality is enabled, the bend radius that I will be given when I do two line segments will be an automatic bend of 6.35 millimeters. And that's where I can adjust it if I would like it to auto bend to something else. Now once the bend is in there, it doesn't mean I can't just go ahead and change the value afterwards. This just makes my life a little bit easier, especially if I have a consistent radius as I go through my 3D sketch tools. Now, having the auto bend radius set in my document settings is only half the battle. If I choose OK to cancel out of here, and I go up to my application options, there is another setting on my sketch tab in here under 3D sketch that turns on and off the auto bend function with 3D line creation. So, since this is currently toggled off, if I were to create two contiguous lines, they would not automatically put a bend between them. If I turn this on, it will turn on that auto bend functionality with the 6.35 millimeter radius as defined by my document settings. So those are two important settings to know about when dealing with 3D sketches. I'm going to choose close to get out of this dialog box. Now back up on my 3D sketch tab. I would also like to just point out there are a few expanded panels here, such as under the draw, there is a precise input command underneath there, and we'll get to that. Under constraint, we have our constraint visibility, but other than that, there's not too much else that's hidden here inside of the 3D sketch world. The icon for 3D sketches is also a little bit different, so you can identify them inside of a model history tree a little bit better. 
So here you can see I have a 3D sketch on the left-hand side. It looks a little bit different than a 2D sketch would. A 2D sketch would just have sketch 1 or sketch 2. Here it puts a prefix on there of 3D.